What's up guys? This is the 6th, 7th, I don't remember, episode of uh, learning how to make games and game programming in C. Where I left off last time was working with learning new APIs, in particular SDL, and learning how to essentially do this, which is create a game window, draw something on it, and then quit. Now, um, as you probably realized, um, games don't work this way. They don't pop up, draw something once, and then quit. They usually run for a while, and they usually animate. And uh, the way that this is typ typically accomplished is through the thing that I showed you in the lesson on flow control structures, a loop, or, or more specifically, um, what's called an event loop. So let me go ahead and delete our drawing code and uncomment this piece that I've been hiding from you guys, which is the um, a basic SDL event loop. Um, the first thing you'll notice when I take you through it is that it's a while loop. Oh god, I hate the way Xcode automatically indents switches. I have no idea why this is doing this. Okay, so here's the basic gist of an event loop. Let me hide some of this to make it simpler if I can. Okay, so this is kind of like the loop I showed you in that first lesson on flow control structures. I use a flag called done, and while I'm not done, I essentially loop not forever, but until the game quits running. So this is the part where the game is actually active uh, inside this while loop. And the way a game works is you typically will draw the screen over and over again many times, and every single time you draw it is one frame. And however many frames are drawn per second is called the FPS of frames per second of the game. Now, there are some more advanced things you can do to control how fast this drawing occurs and auto rating and stuff like that but for the sake of this tutorial I'm just gonna go ahead and show you drawing rapid stuff in succession so this is the same drawing code we had before it just draws that white square uh, the major difference is now if I was to run this it runs until I quit out of the program or until I hit the escape key uh, so this is the part you're familiar with. This is the drawing part. Like I said, I start out with setting uh, some colors. I clear the screen, draw one thing. Well, first I yeah I clear it. I draw one thing, which is a, a rectangle, and then I present the the, the drawing to the screen or, or um, a signal that I'm finished with the draw so that the what I've drawn can show up. Um, this piece here that I've closed is kind of the actual event processing of the event loop. Um, there's a new API call in here called SDL poll event and what this basically does is will return true if there is an event waiting to be processed otherwise will immediately return false so this while loop will process events this is an inner while loop this, this does not run for a very long time probably a few times at most per frame um, this will process all the events waiting in the event system and then return them to us. Uh, this is passed by non-constant reference, this SDL event struct. And but what when this function returns, the struct will contain um, the type of event and then data specific to the event. And the events that we're processing uh, for this game, this particular uh, tutorial are the window close event, in which case I destroy the window and um, should be putting out as well. Uh, key down is another event uh, when the user presses a key on the keyboard. And I just check to see if the escape key has been pressed. And if it is, I quit out. And then of course, SDL quit, which um, is kind of ran when, I think when I hit the, the close window, this also runs. It's probably why it was quitting out. And uh, that's event processing. There's a ton of stuff you can capture in here. Um, as a matter of fact, this is so complicated, or, or I should say complex, you typically wouldn't want to put code like this inside your event loop, because um, your main function, let alone your um, event loop, will just get to be too hard to read. 
So we're going to pull that out right now. We're going to call this a new function just called process events. And that'll make it a hell of a lot easier on us uh, to write our game loop without getting caught up in um, complexity. So I'm just going to move this stuff. I'm just going to cut, call the function, and paste it up here. Now our event processing is handled outside of the main loop. And you can immediately see how much cleaner this is. Um, now you're probably like saying, well, wait a second, there's a bunch of errors up there. And that's very true. Um, it's because there are some variables from main that this thing doesn't have access to. Um, a common thing that people will do in C is they will go ahead and declare these variables as global. Um, that sucks because global variables are bad programming practice and they're a way to get very disorganized very quickly. So what I'm going to do is pass them in as an argument. Um, we have a window which is passed in by reference. It's very important. Pointer denoting reference. Like I said, I'm going to cover pointers in a later lesson, uh, more advanced pointer stuff, but just for now know that's a reference. And I can pass window in. It takes care of the errors saying we don't have a window, but done. Um, well, let's just go ahead and make that a return value. So we're not done by default, but if we set done to true, we are done. And now what we can do is we can say if process events returns the value that would have said we're done, done is one. Or if I want to be lazy and not have if statements in there, I can just do this. But if I want to set done at other times, this could be kind of not optimal. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. Run it. <clears throat> exact same situation. Much cleaner event loop. Um, I think you can guess what's going to happen next. I gotta kill you now! now I'm going to take the drawing code and pull that out into a function as well. So let's have another function. See which ones I have up here. So void to render. I'm going to go ahead. And, I know I'm going to need the renderer, so I'm just going to pass it. And there's the renderer. Now I can take all of this stuff. And put it up here. And now our main function is looking much more like a normal main function, which does a few things, calls some more complex functions, and quits out. Um, I put this line in here to wait about 100... I think that's milliseconds. Wait about 100 milliseconds for every frame because uh, it takes very little time to draw a square on a modern computer. It's very fast. And if all you're doing in your game rendering uh, section is clearing the screen and drawing a square, it's going to do that very quickly, make my laptop get very hot, my GPU get very hot. I don't want to do that, so I'm letting it cool off a little bit in between the drawing. Um, later on, this can become more advanced auto reading code. And so there we have it. Um, the nice part about this is now I can switch to the functions I want to work with. If I'm only interested in drawing code, I only have to look at this function and so forth. It's just a nice way to get myself organized. Um, so that's the basics of event loops. Do I have enough time to get into some kind of custom drawing using a struct? Um, I might. So let me, let me do something here cool. Um, so... Let's make it so that if I press another key, say right arrow, I can move the square. Because if you can't move the square, then what's the point? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my man struct as my x and y position of my square. And I'm going to pass that into process events. Um, Later on, I'm probably going to want to have better ways of getting things in and out of my process events structure, but for now, this should be fine. So, uh, non-constant reference to man, passed into process events. In main, I'm going to go ahead and declare my man, and I'm going to start his x out at the same x I was drawing the uh, square, which looks like it was 220 and... 140, which actually puts the square at the center of the screen. I'm going to leave the rest of man's um, properties uninitialized because I'm not using them. 
and then I'm going to pass in non-constant reference to man here. And to draw him, I'm going to need him in the renderer too. So that should compile. Yep. And the major difference is now, if I press right, man.x plus equals 10. I press left. Oh, if it's a reference, remember, you don't use a dot, you use the arrow. So now you've moved him. This is only going to happen when the keyboard is down. I'll show you in um, a little bit, if I have enough time, how to do it while, while the key is down, like, much like a normal game. But this is just going to happen once on the keyboard down event. And then um, there's other events for key up as well. So I moved the man. And now here, when I, when I initialize my rectangle, I'm actually going to use the man's position to draw it. And if I didn't completely screw this up, I should be able to move him left and right. Yep. So that is some basic animation. It's pretty choppy, like I said, because it's using like normal computer key events as if I was like typing characters on the keyboard and it repeats and stuff. Uh, I'm going to use something a little cooler. And I'm actually going to pull the key state. And uh, I know I'm going to screw this up because I haven't done it in a while. I think it's like SDL get key state. There it is. And I'm just going to look at the documentation for this because I actually don't remember how this works. Awesome. Option click gives me examples. It's exactly what I wanted. Paste that in here. Uh, I get a reference to the state. Um, one thing I didn't cover last time, which is probably good to bring up now, or this isn't going to make much sense, um, is that array references. Remember I told you arrays are references by default. So for example, if you had an array like this, and you wanted to pass a reference, an array reference as a function, you would do something like this. I actually don't think this is going to work. Well, if you were passing it into a function, it would look like that. Um, it's interesting to say that arrays, when they're passed into functions, are references by default, and therefore they have the exact same notation as a pointer reference. Um, and that's the reason why they're able to actually give us a pointer. To, this is an array, is what I'm saying. State is actually an array. And the way that they're, they're returning it is since they can't return an array by value easily, they're returning the reference to the array. So this is essentially kind of like this, but you have to declare it as a pointer. Um, that's kind of what I was going to say. And I know that's confusing, and I'll explain a little better when I get at the tutorial talking about um, pointers, advanced pointers. So the way this works is that if this if statement will be true when this function is called, remember it's being called once per frame, called continuously, um, during this code execution, if the, the key that you're interested in is down at all, it will be true for this whole frame. And the cool thing here is that you can use left and continuously see if the left key is down, and then you could use this to accomplish much more fluid animations. So now I could probably just do minus minus, because remember this is being ran probably close to hundreds of times per second, at least 60 frames a second. So instead of using this event-based stuff, which is still useful, like if you want to see if you've hit escape or keys that move menu options up and down, things you don't want continuously running, you use the code for the key down event. But the continuous stuff you can put here. Now when I run this, I'm going to make this a lot more again. Now when I run this, while my keys are down, much more fluid animation. I'm starting to realize real quickly that this 100 milliseconds was way too much of a sleep. It makes the animation really slow. So I'm going to go ahead and dial that down like I just did. That's better. See that fluid animation? And if I have enough time, which I probably don't, 30 seconds to add Y. Can I do it? Oh, God. Quickly. I'm going to have to edit this video. Up. Down. Y. Do it. Got it. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll show you more next time. Bye.